And welcome to Pulp Mythos. I'm Brian here with Larry and Spencer, and we're going to be discussing Only Murders in the Building, episode number six, To Protect and Serve. Another fantastic episode, in my opinion. Not many left. We got four left till the finale, and we do got a season two. It has been greenlit, which we talked about last week. If you're not hit the sub button, please do so, because we, well, we need the subs. <laughs> and leave an upvote, leave a comment. That helps push the videos. And yeah, man, um, gut milk. Let's <laughs> I, I, a running gag, and it keeps giving, man. Uh, it, it, funny little thing. There's so many little like funny gags and just little bitty things woven into the story. Gut milk being one of them. Um, even Tina Fey's character, who's had a very bit role, but has been profound in the comedy of the series. We get the funny Jimmy Fallon scene, which I laughed out loud at. Um, but yeah, just another fantastic episode. Yeah, what. We were talking before we started recording, you know, Larry, you were just like, shit, man, I love this show. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. How'd y'all feel? Such a great show. And I'm glad we got our, like, a lot of cool little things. And we're getting a lot of the things we talked about in the last episode that we wanted. We wanted more yard dogs. We didn't necessarily get that, but we got a segue in a way of, you know, like, um, you know, the fact that people listen to their podcasts or, are, are, you know, like, it's the segue of the cop back into this show. And, uh. Uh, uh, let me just quickly interrupt you detective williams my god to come in this late in the series and steal the whole episode like every right. scene the herman's head stuff yeah um i mean every part every scene that <laughs> that ex- the herman's head stuff i just want to go into that like i'm sitting there like holy shit i used to watch that and i, and I just loved all the all the little nods to that but yeah great yeah character. Yeah, I've seen every episode of Herman's Head, you know, and I thought that was really cool. Like, when was the last time you heard a Herman's Head reference? Like, exactly. I haven't. <laughs> You've never? Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, I've watched it. I'm just saying, like, you said, when was the last time I heard a reference to it? I don't I don't know that I have, like, since the 90s. <laughs> right. Uh, but, yeah, that was good, and that's a great segue. And, you know, it's just, like, every character that they make for this show also, like you mentioned, the detective and everything, and her still on the show. Every character they make seems to be fairly well fleshed out. I mean, this, the writing on this is so damn good. Um, a lot of good comedy. Like I said, I love the gut milk stuff. And I want merch for that. I want merch for gut, gut milk. I want merch for yard dogs because I love, like, meta show merch like that. You know, I want a yard dogs t-shirt and a, and a gut milk mug. I want a gut milk tank top. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, I- and like you were saying, Larry, the talking about how how well written this show is as a whole, they we have a lot of shows with a lot of filler episodes. And now you get to the the streaming area era of TV, and there's a lot less of that because you know they kind of can they compress a lot of the season. So instead of being twenty three episodes or twenty one episodes, it's like ten or thirteen at most now, uh, which I think makes it, it's been making TV a lot better. Uh, there's a lot less of the filler episodes, a lot less of the episodes that don't matter. But in this, it feels so much like every single thing is important. And uh, to me, that is a testament to how good of a job that they're doing uh, in writing every character completely out prior to them doing anything. We get uh, a lot with Mabel this week. A lot of our questions were answered. We find out her mother lived is not that far off away, you know, and she in fact was sending her, I guess, to her aunt's apartment. Um, Mabel and Oscar do have sort of a little thing going. You know, they were, you know, he was in prison. They were thinking about each other. Clearly, they had feelings for each other. Something, someone killed Zoe that night. Tim Kono knows and didn't say anything for whatever reason, which is what led to Oscar going to prison. We now know that Zoe had a ring on the night of, but not when she was dead, that Tim was trying to get from Angel, Angel being this jewel thing. And we'll get to Angel later, but all the stuff with Mabel, with Oscar, just sort of all that unfolding. Um, yeah, did you? Yeah, you agree? We got we've we had a lot of questions about her, and I felt this episode answered quite a quite a bit of them. Yeah, we got a uh, we got a lot more answers and questions that you know, and, and questions from those answers. 
it does feel very much like uh, like Clue in the way that we do that. That that the show's doing that. Uh, I'm very curious about the 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 angel thing. It was great to to actually get backstory and Mabel because I was really starting to wonder, you know, about like oh, I know we've been speculating so much about her past in all these episodes. It was interesting that that it turns out okay, she actually does seem to have an aunt that lives in that building, you know, because I, I I thought at first like okay, she's just been squatting there, she's homeless maybe or something, but. You know that, like, it, it was interesting to see her her home life, and you know, a lot of good chemistry there with the actors in that scene. I'm outside, so if it gets a little crazy or windy or loud, just let me know. Um, they, uh, I think it's this, super windy. Like, <laughs> I'm joking. He's like, <laughs> like, God, I was like, there's no wind. Like, I don't even feel. It. They were saying you were outside eating a salad. I'm like, what the hell, Spencer? <laughs> Film the podcast. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, uh, I just wanted to be outside salad instead of inside. Are there tomatoes in it? <laughs> yeah, it's outside salad eating. All right. But, they, but to me, like, this episode raised more questions. So you had Angel. Son that is dead, um, is their age. So I think that he may now become a suspect because we said this before that... Uh, Oscar and Mabel clearly had something for each other prior to. So to me, that, you know, raises some questions as to who killed uh, Zoe that night. And I still think that that's going to end up being the main focus because he got blamed for that. But I'm going to start thinking now that it's uh, maybe uh, Nathan Lane's kid. Uh, You know, he got jealous or he was one of the ones interested in Zoe. And uh, I think that maybe he is looking to me like a prime suspect at this point in time. Yeah, Teddy is the character, uh, Nathan Lane's character. And we get a great couple scenes with him. One very comical and then one very serious. Um, Just, I love Nathan Lane. And you're right, the name Angel ties in. He's now a suspect, but I believe you're right about the son because we, we get a quick glimpse of him in one episode his age, just based on appearance, seems to roughly be in sync with what everyone else's age um, is in terms of Mabel and her crew, which would lead one to believe, okay, he um, maybe it's him. Because I don't think it's Teddy. I mean, I could be, we could be wrong, but why would he be investigating a murder or you know stuff that he had something to do with, or it funding an investigation? But I don't know. Uh, Larry, yeah, Larry, oh. what do you? Or, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say they that could still tie in though because if he knows his kid did it uh just like when we watched mayor of east town like there's a lot of things that um like he could still be complicit in it but i don't think he himself did it yeah and i agree with that i think they're gonna invest i think they're gonna investigate this whole thing and of course likely wind up pissing him off and losing that sponsorship and you know likely getting a gut milk sponsorship because they talk about gut milk so much (laughs) like but uh but also, you know, I didn't think about the possibility of it being his son. You know, that that makes a lot of sense, though. Uh, but what I did think it could be, because he said that that's an account that he uses to, you know, fund projects he he, he believes in. You know, like it's his, it's his sort of angel investing account. I thought it could be, okay, well, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, well, who potentially has like uh, a business or anything that he could be fund- funding. It could be someone else that he's giving those checks to from that account. Um, but it being his son also makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that was one of the things that also pointed me towards him. Just, you know, we talk about access to the money. Right. I'm assuming some would at least know how to get access to it. Yeah, I mean, it's... It was interesting when they introduced the character and we all were like, oh, that's interesting. He's just sitting in the back. and um, But looking at his age, it seems like he would be roughly Mabel and Oscar and Tim's age. So, And also learning everybody's in this damn building. You know, it's like oh, everything's tied to the, the Arconia. And so I could definitely see that, that connection. But we still got, what, four episodes. So like I said, maybe it, there's something more to it or it goes in another direction. We still don't know. Um, 
the the Tina face scene. I brought it up earlier, but it, it was just so funny. It, I love the I love their reactions to it. I love the the joking and you know Jimmy Fallon and her talking about you know Brazos has a podcast too and um, <laughs> essentially giving them a shout out while making fun of them at the same time. And we we get the the results of that. They're sitting there like, oh my god, the the podcast is starting to explode. They're getting you know now they're in the thousand plus downloads and it's starting to grow and grow. And my assumptions in the next couple episodes, they're going to be a huge huge podcast well and that's the thing that's the funniest part to me is that it's almost like they were poking fun at them but it, they always say what uh no press is bad no uh, what was it no press is bad press like no matter what kind of coverage you're getting it's good because it still draws eyes towards you regardless of how it's doing yeah. that so yeah. like they just basically took that to its fullest they're people kind of poking fun at them but their numbers it made people aware of what they were doing and immediately it like blew up yeah absolutely and and they have tina face character who's you know basically in this universe sort of the queen of podcasting uh yeah her doing that blows them up and also they got their shout out from yard dogs yard dogs yeah yeah so all of yard dogs subscribers uh, detective williams wife is is a fan Uh, that's how she found out about them through yard dogs through yard dogs <laughs> which is funny because like you said i love all this stuff tying together and uh oh god i hope yard dogs come back <laughs> yeah <laughs> it'd be great for them to just work together like them to make a spot on each other's podcast so like for whatever reason if they're just like hey we found this plant maybe this ties in let's talk to them that would <laughs> <laughs> that might happen actually yeah well, we got a p- new piece of evidence. We we discovered. Now, I wanted your guys' opinion. We didn't talk about this before. The so we find out that there was no toxicology done on Tim Kono, and the cell phone was never turned in for to be analyzed. Um, Williams was puzzled by this because was it? It almost felt like it there was some kind of cover up, or they just didn't, or laziness. What did you think it was alluding to? Because in the end, um, Mabel now has the phone and it's, you know, she's got to figure out what the code is and get into it. And I'm sure that, you know, that's going to lead to the next, the events of the next episode. But did you think it was alluding to a cover up of some kind? I, I, I wouldn't be opposed to that because when you look at who I'm thinking it is, I'm thinking it's Teddy's kid. So, Teddy seems to be very influential. He has a lot of money. He was able to throw thirty thousand dollars at a podcast and just and then fifty, uh, yeah, and then just give him more money. Like it didn't even phase him. Uh, and even in the flashback part, like he was funding a uh, like a failed splash, <laughs> yeah, a failed play, and it still didn't phase him because he's still able to give him eighty thousand dollars. Like it, so the amount of money that he has. Uh, and that also goes into me thinking that he's complicit in it. He didn't do it, but his son is a, you know, a suspect to me, and he's was willing to get his son out of danger. So uh, I think that it can be a cover up. I don't think it's laziness because that that to me would almost be lazy writing. So to include that kind of stuff would be, uh, I I don't I wouldn't like it. If it was just like, oh, well, he just didn't do it, that to me would build the story less. Uh, it would, you know, it w- would it include less suspects. It would, you know, point the finger in the wrong direction. Like, there's no twists and turns if they're just being lazy. So it's. Yeah. Yeah. And I see what you're saying. Like, he or his money are somehow involved in this. Uh, and I, I, I do feel she was implying it was a cover up because, you know, she's talking to her wife and everything. And I think. Because her wife said, you know, like, well, maybe someone overlooked this. And I think she says something along the lines of, like, no, the only way this wouldn't happen is if the department didn't want it to happen. Yeah. And, and it seems like she's going to, you know, tip off the podcast crew next episode. So, like, clearly she doesn't trust the department uh, at that at that point. Yeah. Didn't she send Mabel the phone? Yeah. That's yeah. She sent the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah Cause it, it, I only ask because if that is the truth, which I, I agree with you, I think it's a cover up of some kind. That means this thing's way bigger <laughs> than you know what I mean. Like this is 
there's a lot of layers here now. And then you, you, we start questioning, does this all tie back to Zoe's death? What the hell is going on? And how big is this thing? And why did Zoe have to die? Why did Tim have to die? What, what, what is the answer with the ring? Like, you know, it makes it even bigger and upscale, which I like, which I'm, you know, very much enjoying. Which once again, I go back to, I think it's Teddy's kid because, uh, him killing Zoe, it's, you know, the jealousy thing. He, he wants to be with her, uh, at the time Oscar's with her. Uh, that would also be the reason why he would come after Tim because maybe Tim found out, uh, cause he's working with his dad, you know, with the jewel stuff. Like there's a lot of things that would tie him into that. And then you talk about the police cover up, uh, police cover ups don't just happen. Like it's, there's 99% of the time it's either political or money based, which is also money based. So even if it's or political. covering <laughs> their ass. Yeah. yeah. So it's, you know, it, the money could be traced back to the initial um, cover up, like covering up Zoe's. So now they're trying to cover their tracks again, because if this case gets solved, then it may end up solving the Zoe case. So whoever was involved in that one would get in trouble. So I think there's a lot of tie-ins to uh, Teddy and his kid. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. You know, and the, the money is one of those things that cements it because it has to be someone who's, very well off and potentially connected to the, uh, the the police. And from what we're seeing from a lot of media in the show even is that, you know, everybody knows Demos. You know, he, he seems to have a lot of ties, uh, you know, and like and there's even a, a hint that there's a there's a bit of an angry streak there also in that family with the, the talk the about his father's up. ring. Yeah. 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 That was so good. <laughs> As what I said, we went from a very, you know, great comedy sort of scene with the the Fallon stuff and, you know, Teddy. And then we go to this very serious story rooted in real history and tragedy. And but then it the little end of that is you know, like you said, Larry, that thing with his father. Like I dug his ass up and took it. <laughs> <laughs> um I didn't even know it's it's funny we keep, I didn't even know he was in this show. Like when we initially were like, "Hey, let's do this show." And I looked up everything about it. I didn't know Nathan Lane uh was in it at all. Um I, I want to also real quick uh not dealing necessarily with the story. I want to talk about the the length of the episodes. Um for a series like this a murder mystery and they are each just at 30 minutes and yet it works. Typically a show like this they're longer. Um, but this one works. You, you, they fit in the comedy, the character moments, and the the mystery itself. I just, I just thought it would. It's cool how they're able to do all that in a half hour. I, you have any thoughts on length of the episodes? We always that's a running theme. We always talk about pacing and a lot of the stuff we we cover and pacing on this show. I, I would give it a ten out of ten. Yeah, but I think that, like you said, that's a testament to the pacing and the writing itself. Uh, to be able to everything that's in the show has shown us that it's important. Like there is no throwaway things. There's not really, there's not a lot of red herrings. Like the things that they're showing you, the characters are either being led in the wrong direction. So it's not like the show itself is trying to throw us off. They're doing a good job of making the characters believe the wrong things. So it's not like us. They're showing us this plaque on the wall. That's leading us towards this person. It's if there's a plaque on the wall, if there's something there, you know, it, one of the characters are like Oliver's like, oh, my God, that might mean this. Uh, the tie dye guy thing, you know, that Steve Martin's going on and on and on about there. All of these things are the characters being led in the wrong direction, which. But they've all led to actual. Yes. Stuff. Actual yeah. leads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, true. What I'm not saying is that nothing's been a throwaway moment yet. And I think that's a testament to the writing and the planning, because this isn't a procedural where. You know, come up so fourteen. They're like, "Oh shit, we, we don't really know how this season's gonna wrap up." Uh, <laughs> and then they start trying to piece stuff together. This show's been planned and written out to where no moment has felt like a like it was unimportant or like it was a throwaway moment. Yeah, absolutely, and and that's why that's another reason why I compared this to Clue earlier because of the pacing, you know, and that every scene seems significant. Yeah, like you said, Brian, I'd give it a, a ten out of ten on that. And, uh, you know, everything's packed with so much information and, you know, and yet 
the pacing of the comedy of the of the plot of the way that they you know just sort of dot in those clues it's one of those few shows where i never look at my phone or do a do a you know go off and do something or, or cook while i watch it you know i'm I'm on the edge of my seat watching it for the whole episode. Yeah, me too. Um, I even love the uh, the rando and yeah, <laughs> all the little <laughs> things, you know, and and um, just the relationship of uh, Oliver and Charles developing, and then Mabel too. And I, I love the line where you know her mom's just is like, "How old are they?" You know, and her just being, you know, in the end, just like, you know what, they're the only real friends I've had in a long time. And just sort of that, we talked about that in the last several reviews about this really well developing friendship between the three and how well it works and the chemistry and in this episode, you know, continued that. Um, and, and I'm just so happy we're getting a season two. I, I like when we know that in advance. We don't have to speculate yeah. and and be concerned about the finale because it's like okay, even if the finale is not perfect, we know we're going to get a continuation. Well, it gives them a chance to wrap it up. So even if there's like a cliffhanger or something, you know that you're going to get an explanation next year or next season, as opposed to where if you're not sure whether or not you're getting a second season, it feels so much up in the air, and then it makes it to where, and we review American Horror Story, but the way that their seasons are wrapped up, like if you don't agree with the ending or if you don't like that season, go to the next season. You might like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, whereas this, yeah. if you don't like the ending of it and they don't renew it, then you're just fucked. It feels like you wasted time. It, uh, Cause I prefer when I either know a, this is a one and done a hundred percent there, there will be no second season or B, uh, yeah, we're getting a second season. The whole, we're not sure thing I hate. And, and it happens often. Uh, especially in, um, I don't know if it's a problem in other countries, but in the U.S. in our entertainment w- series, it's a big problem. Um, well, yeah, you know, and that's a good point, and it, it may be a more of an issue in the U.S. because you know a lot of the uh, the the shows you watch on like the BBC or whatever, like they'll wrap up in an arc that season. Yeah, maybe there may be some additional plot lines, but with yeah. these type of shows, you never know how much will be left hanging. So. And they'll call their season a series because it is a series. It's done. It's, you know, maybe there'll be more, maybe there won't be. But like you said, they they seem to have more of a a strategy with the planning. I think that goes back to budgeting. When you, to me, if I'm pitching a show, I'd be like, hey, I want to do this many episodes to run my full story arc. This is how much it costs. If they're like, nope, we can't do that much. I'd just be like, all right, well. Uh, I can cut this and this. Can I still get this many episodes and do it for this? I think that it's about budgeting uh, more so than anything else. And I think that as writers with streaming and with, uh, you know, there's so many avenues to get your material out there now that I think being able to operate under a stricter budget is creating creative kind of material like this. Uh, because there isn't a lot of sets, there isn't a lot of places. It's just three really, well, two really good actors, and then Selena Gomez is surprising me. Like I didn't know that she was going to. I like her way more in this than I thought I was going to, uh, which is a testament to her playing off of, uh, you know, Martin Short and Steve Martin. And you, you didn't watch Wizards Away, Harley, please. <laughs> no, I, but they, uh, but. It's such a low budget kind of thing. And to me, it it relies so much on the strength of the writing that this to me should be a new pillar that shows should have to strive to. And I think that some people are stepping up, uh, others are not, but I think that it is creating more creative styles of uh, television. Ted, Ted Lasso dominated the what Emmys or whatever. I, I could see this show being a, a big deal in the next award season. Have either of y'all seen Ted Lasso? I haven't, but I've heard yeah. so much about it. <laughs> People love that show. It's so good. Yeah, I watched the <laughs> Emmys. I watched the Emmys and was it was cool because watching their chemistry while they're all sitting there cheering for each other made me know why those shows were women winning Emmys because there's a couple like outliers that won shows and stuff, but. They were just kind of like clapping for each other, but everybody on the crown 
they were like losing their shit when one of their people won. But it was the same thing for Ted Lasso. Like when one of their people won, every one of their co-stars were super excited for them. So knowing the chemistry is that great in the show just shows me that it's it, it would be very good to watch because it's they're loving each other. They're just like, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, 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 I compare it to like the office in that you take the, the main premise. Okay. People that work in an office, well, who gives a shit? Mm-hmm. And you know, Ted Lat, look, I'm just not a, I'm not a soccer guy or well, you know, football, whatever you want to call it. I don't care, but it, yes, that's what the show's about, but no, that's not what the show's about. You know what I mean? It's about the characters and the relationships and all that. And it, it just does such a brilliant job of it. You just lost at least three subscribers with that <laughs> football comment. Like, but, uh, <laughs> but you're right. And uh, like, but that's, what's good about this show too. Like you said, that chemistry, that, that yes. chemistry that they have, because I can't name a scene in, um, in only murders where people aren't playing, where the characters aren't playing off each other really well. There's just such good chemistry in this show. Dude, I brought it up like 50 times in this, but the Fallon Tina Fey scene is so yeah. well done. It feels like a re- it feels like a real late night segment um, of you know him well, interviewing her and her cracking jokes. Like, and those two have obviously played off each other in the past and worked okay. together. Worked together a lot. Yeah. So <laughs> so that's how you know they're able to achieve that. But yeah, even that scene. Uh, like well, I said, um, Detective Williams. All all those scenes were, were were very well done. Everybody, and this is a, like I said, to introduce a new character six episodes in. I mean, we we saw her in the first episode um, for like two seconds, but to to come in and and just you know completely now be a part of the show, you know, it's just very well done. Well, yeah, and all of her relationships felt that fluid too, you know, because it's you know you saw her and her wife, and they felt very much like an old married couple, and. Uh, even like the old a, dude at the police station. I was going to say that. Yeah, yeah. They, it seems like they've been working together for a while. You know, you get that feeling. And uh, like in even scenes with Mabel and the other younger characters that she grew up with, you know, they it, it just seems like they have that chemistry of people that grew up in the same place and, you know, have that history between each other. Well, and I think it helps, too, because you talk about when we watch shows sometimes it's you feel like you're missing out if you don't get a you know 90 minute backstory on this one character because it feels like their character is not that well fleshed out and they just it their like point in the story doesn't really make sense and and, but the way that this has been written and shot every everything feels like you already know so even when she introduced her wife and you get like her monologue where she's you know, talking in her own head and talk about, you know, Herman's head and stuff. It's, it feels like you already know her. And I don't know. It, it just, it's very, I don't know or where I'm looking well, well, the little bit about her, she smokes and she's dealing with the trauma of work and she brings up, you know, the case she was on and the, they're, they're trying to bring a kid into the world and all the, like we get these little bitty things, you know, she was upset that she didn't come there to help work on the, the nursery, but she was explaining, well, I'm working and we, within minutes understand their relationship, the struggles, the conflict, like it's all done in just a handful of lines of dialogue. Yeah. And like you were saying, Spencer, the Herman's head thing really gives you a set to her mind frame because she's using that as a mirror for her own, for herself, you know, that she's kind of a introvert and, you know, like when she, she mentions what she hoped the ending of the show would be, you know, it's, she's reflecting like her own relationship that she has that outlet now that it's no longer just her stuck in her head. Yeah. Yeah. The Herman's head reference, man. (laughs) The show, the show makes us talk about some weird things, man. You know, like I, I didn't expect to be talking about Herman's head this episode, or to have an episode focused around Sting. You know, it's a lot, a lot of interesting references. We've been uh, in the podcast get another throwback to the cat guy. Yeah. <laughs> it, but that's it. Makes it to where, like we said, the no throwaway scenes like that shows relevance to him initially even though we feel like he's probably not one of the outlying suspects now 
but it still makes it to where when he was a suspect, it was important. Like everything feels important. Like even the whole sting stuff, it was, you feel like it was a running joke, but it at least points you in a direction. Like it's helping them get right on, or uh, get on the right track. And it's just so, so good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the fact that we've talked about it as long as the episode is long. Um, <laughs> Uh, let me go through my notes. I think we've covered everything. Um, yeah, that fifty thousand dollars is like holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, even the fact that they were willing to tear up the check, or at least contemplating doing it, because they didn't want to profit off of the loss and the tragedy of Mabel. Like even that little nugget of story, you know that they were they were conflicted on that, and then of course they're coming in the end and being a part of the team again. And her mom understanding that, you know, she needs this and that, you know, I like the line about she was always the kid that wanted to know the end of the story. She needed to know the answers. And um, like you said, Spencer, there is no throwaway line. Every line connects to, you know, to everything. Very careful writing in this show. Yeah, and that's why, like, when I look on, you know, people talking about it's overrated, it's this, it's that. And I'm like, it's not. <laughs> it's it's one of those things where it, the kind of humor, everybody has different senses of humor. So I, I get that it's not everybody's favorite, but to me, anybody who, to me, there should be no critic who isn't in love with the show because when you critique stuff, you're looking at a lot more aspects than just, you know, well, this was visually appealing. It's, you know, how well it's written, the characters playing off each other, you know, time pacing. There's a lot of things and this show hits everything. So I don't understand some of the people griping about it, but it everybody's got their own opinions. That's true, but I don't know a single. There's nobody that I know that's seen this that doesn't like it. I have a I have a friend who I hadn't heard from for like a week because they're they're very sick right now. And uh, the one thing they did message me about, they're like, "Hey, you know, while I've been sick, I've been marathoning this this." Um, only Murders in the Building show. Have you seen that? This is amazing. This is the best thing I've seen on TV. You know, and uh, and that's the only response I, I, I kind of response I've gotten on this show. And it's usually followed by, have you also seen Ted Lasso? But, you know, <laughs> yeah. people love it that much. Well, I'm just talking about, like, I, I read, uh, whatchamacallit, the, um, uh, the stuff on IPB and it's one of the ratings for the, this episode was getting worse by the week. And I'm like, but then the next one is a 10. Can someone relax with criticizing Selena's voice? She has, and then it's like, some of the ratings are, they don't like Selena Gomez's voice. And I'm like, really? Yeah. yeah. So it, <laughs> it's a person's voice. What do you not like about her? What, that doesn't even make sense as a criticism. They don't like her voice. <laughs> Jesus, man. It's not that they don't like the way that she's reading the lines or her character or her characters. They don't like her voice. Like, nothing you can do about that. Yeah. And, you know, whatever. I don't even want to go into yeah. that. I guess. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, any, like I said, I think we've gone through just about everything. Any other thoughts on uh, on this episode? Uh, I mean, no, <laughs> no, nothing. You know, it's uh, same as always. The show is a masterpiece. You know, I, I can't wait to see how it ends. But so far, this show is perfect. Yeah, absolutely loving it. Uh, can't wait to do the remaining episode reviews. And like I said up front, please hit that sub button. Um, yeah, appreciate everyone listening, and we will see y'all next time. Bye. Bye. If the